Now we all know iPhone 15, we're all mad about it being 60 hertz despite having a 2000 nit display. I mean, 60 hertz for 800 and 900 dollars. Come on, let's get real. All right, look at this. Yeah, supposed getting real about 60 hertz. And this is an $800 phone that still has a 60 hertz display. This ever since on $800 phone the plus is $900 don't forget is actually really fascinating to me it's so odd but on one hand for most people buying this phone it's totally fine it literally doesn't have you it's a new baseline iPhone have you talked to someone who buys a new baseline iPhone they literally don't care it doesn't matter well uh, there's some controversy there yeah I buy baseline iPhones not because I don't care, but because I just don't have that money to give Apple for one device. Yeah. So I actually had this um, survey. Yeah. I mean, like watching people and all that. And I feel like, yes, there is a huge percentage or significant percentage of people that buy iPhones because they don't care. That is a baseline 60 hertz. But most people buy it because they carry their phone, the 120 hertz iPhones and then rather than buying a 120 hertz Android phone, they rather just have iOS but on the baseline. It's not something they pay attention to. You could ask them right now how many frames per second their phone is and they wouldn't have an answer. It just doesn't matter. So just as long as it works and it's all relatively smooth like last year and the year before and the year before, it's totally a non-factor. I have actually literally handed a 120 hertz phone to people next to a 60 hertz phone and even side by side next to each other, they can't see the difference. Or if they do, it's just like, oh, that's a subtle thing that seems kind of neat, but they'd be totally fine missing out on it. So with the target demographic of this phone, it's totally fine. It's not fine. 120 hertz is literally double of 60 hertz. There is no way someone is going to scroll side by side on a 60 hertz iPhone and a 120 hertz iPhone or iOS operating system, scrolling, like launching apps, you know, using the app switch especially and then tell me they can't really tell the difference they're going to tell the difference straight away but on the other hand apple the richest technology company in the world does stuff all the time that regular people will literally never notice that are subtle improvements or changes here and there all the time like when they switch these baseline iphones from lcd to oled displays do you think any of these people actually notice that or what about going from the A15 Bionic last year to this A16 Bionic? Do you think people are actually noticing the differences here? Or what about when they just added 5G to the iPhone and most people didn't care? Like making subtle improvements over time is what modern smartphones are all about these days. And I would actually argue that a higher refresh rate is more noticeable to more people than some of those other things. Like I think you could today hand me a professional, an unlabeled iPhone with an A15 Bionic and an A16 Bionic, and it would take me quite some time to find the real differences between them. And so that, combined with the fact that it's incredibly cheap and easy and reasonable to get to like e at least a 90 hertz phone, isn't there a, the new Moto G is like... The so-called subtle changes he talked about, the 5G, the OLED, uh, they are not so subtle. Yeah, definitely when you use an LCD and then you switch to an OLED, you will tell by how relieved your eyes are going to be, at least for the first, even the first day of using the phone. Yeah, I don't think like you won't be able to tell. Imagine using an iPhone 11 LCD display and an 11 Pro OLED display. Definitely you'll tell the difference. Your eyes will tell you something, something isn't quite right. Or should I say something is actually quite right after a long time of it not being quite right. Yeah, so I don't believe that sort of BS and all that. It's not BS though, but yeah, I don't I just don't believe that. And what is it about 5G? Come on, 5G was literally what everyone was talking about as soon as it came out on mobile. Yeah. I mean that was what people were using to like oppress people that still use 4G LTE. And I would literally have to put that on their top series, even if they hadn't really perfected the modem and all that. So, he hurts at $170 or something like that. Now, I'm sure that's a horrible looking screen compared to this iPhone that's 720p with the brightness of a box of crayons. But still, they decided to add that to that phone because Motorola knew that enough people would notice it and feel 
that smoothness difference and it's a higher level of perceived performance. So it's just wild to me knowing how easy it would be for Apple to make this even a 90 hertz display, but they just refuse to do it because they've attached the word pro to that feature. The, the not expensive phone in the world with a 60 hertz display. Anyway, speaking of what... That's right, the most expensive phone in the world with a 60 hertz display. Good. Honestly, my opinion or my thoughts might not be as significant as far as the tech community is concerned. As much as this big YouTuber is like Mr. Holtico on NKPHD, but honestly, if Apple really is trying to save cost and you know do the rest, what well, I've said is that they should have done like Samsung a bit. Why not reduce the pixel density? Yeah, I think all their iPhones run at 460 ppi right now. All of them across the board, or an average of 460 ppi. That is actually a flagship level of pixels, the pixel density. Why not reduce the pixel density a bit to like 400 ppi on the baseline iPhones, but then with a 120 hertz display or a 90 hertz, just a higher refresh rate, and then use the 460, 470, whatever they want to use on the Pro models. I mean, that should make much difference. Or oh, why not even make the baseline iPhone still peak at, like, let's say 1,500 nits or 1,300 nits, around that range, and then raise the refresh rates. It seems Apple would rather add every other thing that doesn't have the label of Pro to the baseline iPhones other than Pro version. And they could make a, let's say, sub Pro motion or a budget motion or a baseline motion. Come on. <laughs> Anyways, that's just what I think. Yeah, there is so much to talk about. But in the end, Apple owns their products, they decide everything. And then we prove them that they are making the right decision. I mean, the sales of the baseline iPhones are actually skyrocketing this year. So I think we prove to them that, yeah, actually, we're making a good decision. We should probably make the iPhone 17, 18, and 19 all, maybe we'll bring them down to 30 hertz. People will still buy them. So, yeah. Anyways, that's a story for another day. Thanks for watching this video. Check out the other ones. I had it out.